Now I want to go briefly through what I call the short-term benefits. Uh, some people call these fringes, some call them short-term benefits. Call them what you will. The first thing that I've got up here now on this screen says assured checks backed by cash reserve. That, ladies and gentlemen, is something that they can get nowhere else in this country in any marketing system that's in operation today. It's a super deal. And we've learned to accept it as an everyday common thing. We don't talk enough about it. Find a guy that's got a hog check for twelve or $14,000 that he's been carrying around three or four years and can't cash. And he'll tell you how super a deal it is. It's important to him. We've got to talk about that. It needs to be talked about a lot. We call the next thing collective selling, which means that we get producer benefits without middlemen margins. Why did we call it collective selling? Why didn't we call it collective bargaining? Two reasons. One, Many people that's in agriculture and in business today don't understand collective bargaining anyway. I never could talk to a guy about something he didn't at least understand the basics of. So we don't talk to him about it. We talk to him about collective selling. That he understands. Block, negotiate, and deliver. That he understands. That he likes. That you like that I like because it works. Sometimes I think these programs are too simple. But the real problem is that we fail as individuals, and I'm guilty, we fail to tell the people what we've really got here, what we've really got to offer for them. Forward sales contracts, protection of cash flow, price protection, without margin money. That little small entity of this program of the hog division of the New National Farmers Organization is one of the greatest fringes that ever happened. Here's the opportunity to sell hogs from one to six months in advance at a locked in price delivered to a plant on plant weights but the money's guaranteed because you got the insured checks. You got no problem with it. It's a super deal. If we put together a block of hogs, a power base with which we can negotiate with, create our own market structure, or create the upward pressure, the upward pressure on the markets that we know we have the ability to do, and would take if we would, and we're encouraging it now on a full-time basis, take 15 to 25 percent of our production, whatever fits your individual system, and sell it ahead at a locked-in price. You've created the upward pressure and put a chalk right under it. Because the speculators cannot work below those figures or that percentage of figures that they know are cash delivered hogs. Nobody's going to buy them back and get them out of the bucket. They're going to take the hogs. You build an automatic support under that thing. If the whole industry would do it, we'd build a floor price with it. It's very important. It's also a very good business move on most people's part. When you got your feed costs locked in, you know what your corn is, your supplement's going to be, your system's already there, you can figure the depreciation and taxes when the market moves correctly in the right fashion where you can get a profit. Maybe it's only a small profit, but take 10 or 15 percent or 20 percent and sell them ahead and put a floor price under this thing. That's a simple statement, complete marketing service to fit your needs. Anybody in here ever try to offer a complete marketing service to 50 people with 50 different ideas? We got the ability to do it. 
It's a success story all of its own because we can, because Mr. Sunken and the people that have worked with this organization for many years have put together the right kind of people, the people that think right and do it right, provide complete marketing service. That service that we provide for our membership and our at no matter what size production they operate, whether they're 200 a year hog producers or 200,000, that service is complete. There are people in this room who buy marketing service assistance or information from various groups around the country. We've all done it, we all do it. You can't get any more service there than you've already got right here and it's one of the fringes that we need to be talking about it's not the purpose of the organization it's not the purpose of this division to be in that business but it's a fringe benefit that comes with cost of production plus a reasonable profit and it's there and we got to talk about it because it's a super deal Okay, we're down to formulated contracts. They are a big plus because they reoccur often. Formulated contracts a few years ago never been heard of in this country. Never even thought about it. That statement says so many things that it's, it's pretty difficult for one guy to explain it. Because what it really says is that this organization has the ability to build a market and design a program to fit your marketing needs and do it with a contract. We're in this room today discussing marketing program, the pork peck program, the bringing together of the pork industry, all entities. And it's going to happen. We're going to be involved with contracts not only with processors, but with some retailers someday. That's going to happen. Because we have the ability with this program, the good business people that are involved in this organization, and the good business people that are willing to come in and help us now to do whatever is necessary to create the goals of this group, cost of production plus a reasonable profit. Can I have the lights, Keith? Now, I'm not going to take very much more of your time. I do want to say a couple of things with the lights on so I can see everybody. One, I would ask that each person in this room give some serious consideration to what are the fringes in this program and what about pork back? You people have got something to offer the pork industry that nobody else ever thought of. Nobody else ever been able to do. You have the organization with 25 years behind it of work, endeavor, dedication, and intelligence that made this pork peck program what it is today and what it will be in the future. Go tell the people about it. It's a super program. It's got to be right. It's really got to be right. You've got the ability to build for those people, your neighbors, your pork industry people in your area, the type of program that they want. And it's all here for us. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for stopping in. I'd like to say to you that we will be available in the booth. We're always available in the office. Be looking forward to working with many of you in the next year with the Pork Peck program.
And with that, I'll give it back to Mr. Sunken. All right, in summarizing this, there's a few points that I think is important that we talk about and cover because as hog producers, I think it's going to be very, very important to you in the very next few months. As the USDA report came out just a few days ago, we had the Economic Statistics Service uh, econo uh, economic people from Washington, uh, Robert uh, Rimgel, uh, made a statement or a report here that for the early part of the 1981, the hog market would be in the $50 range, which would be $16 over the past year. But he also said, however, the feral to finish hog produ production cost that he would be forecasting would be in the $52 area. So what happens if we have over $50 hog markets? Your cost of production may be also in the $50 and over range. I had a gentleman come to me shortly after the last presentation here earlier this morning and he said, my feed dealer, and I'm not mentioning names at this point, but my feed dealer told me that there was a possibility and a strong possibility in the next six months to one year that some of my supplement would cost $1,000 a ton. That was told to me within the last half, or well, within the last hour and a half. Well, we have put together, and we'll be passing out here today as you leave this meeting, uh, our thoughts on cost of production. We will be passing out sheets if you want to discuss them with us a little later uh, in the day, come over to the booth or discussing anything, come over to the booth and we'll very, be very willing to discuss it with you. But if you figure in $300 soybean meal today at 44% soybean meal, you figure in three to three and a half dollar corn on a corn hog ratio of 3.3 to 3.8, which you'll see that our projections are, you're running a $51 cost of production. Well, I don't know what the hog market's going to be, but I do know one thing that a year ago, this last past October, we had the average price of approximately 33 cents for hogs in this country. I'm talking about interior Iowa, southern Minnesota hog market. I do know this last past October, we killed as many hogs as we did one year earlier, and the average hog price was $47.17 per hundredweight. I do know with a simple mathematics, that's $14 per hundredweight. Over a year ago, and we're killing the same number of hogs, past three months we've killed more hogs than we did the previous three months a year earlier. And the hog market's running approximately $14 per hundred weight. Somebody wants to discuss the law of supply and demand, why I'm free from now until Friday morning or as soon as this next session's over and I'd like to discuss it. If you can explain it to me, I'd be more than pleased to listen to you because I cannot explain it. I think there's other factions that implicated in the $14 raise in the hog market in the past year, and I think those may be some of the NFO uh, actions that's been going on, such as the Sal Sell-Off program, which has started November the 6th of 1979 and carried through pretty well into April. I know that the national pork producers uh, have chimed in and talked and promoted some of the same things. I know the national pork producers in this country has done a tremendous job in marketing and research and I think they have a lot of credit coming for it. I look forward in working closer to, as a director of the hog division, I look forward in working closer with the National Park Producers Congress throughout the next few years to come. Some of the other things that we will be, our goals are for 1980, 1981, and that is 
continuing to work harder and promote better the pork peck program. Wayne Leedy and three other staff people went to South Dakota two weeks ago and in four days they made 82 face-to-face -face contacts uh, on the road. They enrolled 14 new producers and got 22 callbacks wanting them to come back the second time and go over the program with them again. I think that's remarkable. I think really what it's telling me as a director of the division is telling me that the hog producers out here are very definitely looking for a long range program, looking for some hope other than just taking their hogs down to the local buying station or their local terminal yards and saying, what do you give me for them? What do you give me? Well, those days had better be over in the hog industry because, ladies and gentlemen, next year, a few of you people sitting in this room will not be hog producers. That's sad, but those are facts. A few of you people sitting in this room will not be producing hogs next year. That's the way it'll be. And it won't be very many more years down the road, and I will be able to stand up here and say they are now, instead of 25,000 hog producers producing 40% of the hogs in this nation, there will be 200 hog producers producing 40 or 50% of the hogs in this nation. I have walked across hog yards in the past one year that has had 100 and 200 up as high as 400,000 hogs produced in them in a one year period. Yes, when I joined this organization and raised some 500 to 1,500 head of hogs a year, yes, I thought, you know, I was the biggest and I probably was one of the largest hog producers in my county and that was a big deal. You know, well, I wouldn't even be one of the average hog producers today. I mean, it surpassed that so far that it's not even to be discussed. We're working with a new breed of producers. No, they're your sons and daughters and some of you people. But it's very serious, and I don't know how to get the message across. And I've had it said to me several times in the last couple of days that I've been here at this convention. Merle, when are you going to send help into my county? When are you going to do something for our collection point? Well, ladies and gentlemen, the only thing I can assure you, I will spend the dollars and cents every one of them possible to put every ounce of help and every ounce of strength that we can out there into the field. We only have 21 full-time staff people working for us in the hog division. Well, that sounds like a lot of people, but they're scattered from Portland, Oregon, to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and from Moultrie, Georgia, to Sioux Falls, South Dakota. That's a pretty good size area, and you just about can get lost in that area. Yes, we need your help. We did have an increase in hog numbers throughout the organization last year. You want, to know, want me to really be the truthful with you? I'm going to tell you the truth about something. I hope I always tell you the truth, but this is something you guys had better understand. And I hesitated about even mentioning it, but I think it's high time that we face reality right here within this room. Last year, the FIS slaughter figures were up approximately 11%. This organization moved about a 12% increase. So why does that tell you? That the National Farmers Organization, Hog Division, grew 1% last year in its total numbers. And that makes me want to throw up. And I'm serious. And our goals for the Hog Division this year is to increase our volume by 30%. I know it can be done. But I do know that I and 21 full-time staff people don't have a chance because I know that the hog producers are leaving the farms faster than what ever before in history. They're leaving the farms. I talked to a gentleman in the South yesterday that said they was foreclosing 
on hog producers in his area? Several. I think he mentioned five to me that had hog confinement setups that didn't make it through the 28 to $32 hogs that we had just a very short time back. And I will assure you there's people sitting in this room that won't make it with $52 cost of production hogs in the early 1981s. Well, the forward cell contracting, yes, we're going to push it much harder than what we have in the past. No, I'd like to see the mercantile exchange in Chicago close for the lack of work. I'd like to see the Board of Trade be totally destroyed for the lack of having your and my production sold through it. Why do we as producers allow the Board of Trade to money the gamblers up here in Chicago rip us off day in and day out? We've allowed them to do that with the food and fibers of this country that you produce. That's a shame. You know, shame on me and shame on you. That's the way it is. But that's part of the program that we in the hog division have to use to help stabilize the market. Those are the things that we have been forced to use on a daily basis. Yes, we sold hogs yesterday for, we sold like 16 or 18 contracts just yesterday. It ranged from 53 to $55 uh, for the first early months of 1981. I don't know if it's going to be good or bad. I do know that the people that we sold the hogs for said they could lock in like a four or a five dollar per hundred weight profit at that level. Well, that's what that program is meant to do. I do know that you can't lock in a thirty dollar per hundred weight loss like we just had a short time back. Those are some of the things that we're going to be looking forward to be doing in the coming years. At this time, I would like to introduce uh, a few people. I don't know everybody that I want to introduce, so I'd just like to have all the people that work with our collection points as a collection point manager or a custodian of our collection points. I'd like to have them stand, please. Anybody that's in here? Wisconsin, Illinois, Iowa, Minnesota, Nebraska, Kansas, Ohio, Missouri. Thank you. There's the people that I brought to the convention that will that's getting paid to be here at the convention are Keith Harvey standing over here. He took uh, Wayne Leedy's place. Uh, over here in the edge of uh, Indiana and in the edge of Ohio. Uh, Keith there has only been with us six months. Uh, he's quite an eager beaver. Uh, he drives me insane. And once in a while when he turns in his pay voucher, I send him back. And uh, he has a... <laughs> Would anybody... Ah, oh, never mind. I'm not going to pick on you, Keith. That's all right. Uh, the gen... <laughs> Keith is doing a splendid job for us. I'm mighty proud to have him on the staff with us. The guy standing, the gentleman standing right beside him is, is Kenny Reed, and he is from the southeast corner of Nebraska. He's taking care of the Pawnee uh, City Collection Point for us, Syracuse uh, and Friend, I believe. No, Hanover or Friend uh, Collection Points. In that area for us, uh, they're going to be out here working at the booth uh, with us uh, the rest of the week. Uh, the gentleman who, of course, been speaking with us is Wayne Leedy. Uh, these are full-time staff people. They're paid to be here at this convention to service you people and all the other people that stood up. It's their responsibility is to answer your questions for you as we continue on. And I would like to announce to you the 10 largest collection points. Well, before I do that, there's a couple other people I think I ought to introduce. Jolene, would you stand up, please? This is Jolene Gary uh, from the Home Office. She is the uh, uh, Hug Division Secretary and works with me very closely and once in a while gets a little upset with me and, and I certainly appreciate, Jolene, you working with me closely. I do appreciate it, Jolene. <laughs> the, the lovely lady sitting right beside her is Carol Olive. She is the Meat Department Secretary. 
She takes care of the hogs, fat cattle, feeder cattle, and sheep, and she is directly involved uh, quite a bit uh, with the communications of the sheep division, working with Dick Hammond because he's at the West Coast where the sheep are really at. So thank you, Carol. <laughs> Last but not least, uh, another very lovely lady that if it wasn't for her, I'm certain that I wouldn't be standing here today, and I'll probably embarrass the lady, but Marcy, would you please stand up? <laughs> this is a lovely lady that uh, I've had the privilege of, of spending about 20 years with already, and she's raised three. She has raised three beautiful sons, and one in college, two of them's in college now, and one is still in high school, and uh, she's done a splendid job. She's always been at my side, and when I wanted to quit the farming operation and go full-time for NFO, and uh, she frowned a little bit upon that, and then one day after a few years later, why, I walked in the house one night, and I said, "Hun, I said, uh, I've had an opportunity to go to work for the organization at the home office in Corning, Iowa, and I said, uh, would you pack up your bag and the kids' bags because we're going to be leaving in about 30 days. Well, she swallowed hard and said, "Hun, if that's really what you want to do, if that's where you want to make your life, if that's what you think's best for our, me and my family, we'll do it. And so, thank you. As we go into the top ten collection points in the past year, the first one is Ireland, Indiana. <laughs> they missed the first meeting by see, they came wrong the second one. Well, I tell you what, I, uh, you've heard me say Ireland, Indiana has been the largest collection point. Uh, in the past 12 months, they've averaged 979 head of hogs, uh, which is about 51,000 head of hogs for the past 12 months. I am very proud of them. We uh, uh, made a little bit of a change down there. We hired a young man by the name of Tom Swears out of Corning, Iowa. He went down there some two months ago. They've got a young secretary down there. It's about 22 or 23 years old, Jermaine Shook. Uh, She's the only person on the, in the world that can call 40 farmers and get hogs out of 39 of them and get two promises out of the other one. You know, she, in other words, that sweetheart don't take a no for an answer. Uh, the, the thing that's made Ireland, the, the success that they've been is for the people like you just heard the yelling down here coming from it. Uh, they have been very active. It's a very active area. They're, they're active in all the county. Uh, leadership and what's going on. If they've got a problem, they're not afraid to call you and, and talk to you about the problem, but when you tell them how to solve the problem, what you want them to do, they go back home and do their best in achieving that goal, and I think that's so very vitally important. And their goal, and for the last six weeks, they have averaged a little over 1,325 head of hogs per week, and their goal for next year is running approximately 68 to 70,000 head of hogs plus better than 100 head of cattle per week out of that one collection point. That's their goal. <laughs> and besides that, I want them two to take that home because I set the goal. They didn't know that was going to happen. <laughs> Not really, but they will do it because they've got the right attitude. They've got the relationship. Four Rivers, Missouri. Dimmick, South Dakota, Salem, Oregon, rad 800 head of hogs a week, uh, Vesta, Minnesota, Montevideo, Minnesota, Sargent, Nebraska, Ivanhoe, Minnesota, Farley, Iowa, and 10th place had a three-way tie. One of them were Burkittsville, Ohio, Browns Valley, <laughs> Ohio got here, well oh, hi Ed. Burkittsville, Ohio, Browns Valley, Minnesota, and Ghent, Minnesota. But as you heard those names read, I think what's a very significant thing is that it very, very well proves that this organization is a nationwide organization because you heard the names from Ohio to Portland, Oregon on that list, and I think that's a super job. It really is. So with that, uh, I'm going to wind it down. We have a lot of other programs to talk about. I did promise the people we'd keep this one down to an hour and a half. It's been about an hour and 24 or 25 minutes. And so with that, I just want to thank you for all being here. We've got 
some full-time staff people here and all the staff people you've seen stand up on the commission basis and anyone else that works for the hog division will be available out the booth uh, the rest of the day and tomorrow to answer your questions. If you need to talk to myself, I'll be here as long as you need me and I just thank you for coming.